I started by ripping my plywood in it down to smaller, more manageable sizes using my circular saw. For this project, I ended using a, about a full sheet of plywood, a little less, but I just used this straight edge guide to cut straight and rip it down to width so it's much more manageable for the table saw. Now with the table saw, I just ripped my panels down and this ensured that they were equal length. Now I'm just screwing the bottom and side together. I just pre-drilled and screwed these together. I used pretty long screws and glue just to make sure they're really tight bound. And then I moved my uh, cabinet to the ground and I clamped the backer board to where I was gonna drill my hole just to help prevent against any blowout. And um, it really helped with the blowout. And I just ended up using a Forstner bit for this. It just, it's important that it fits the pipe. My pipe was three quarter, which is the thickness of my plywood, so it worked out well. But it would probably work with most sizes of pipe. And I just drill. It was a little slow because my portion of it was kind of dull, but I got through. And there was minimal blowout thanks to the back of wood. Now I'm just, I'm just screwing these strips of plywood next to the pipe. This is what holds the top in place. Uh, it's important that they're sandwiching the pipe and that they're very st strongly held on because a lot of the weight will rest on this when you rotate it. So I just glued and screwed these two. And now I'm gluing on the side. It's important with these that the corners are left open for the hardware that will hold it in place. And I clamped these in place and then I just pre-drilled and drove screws in. Same with this one. Just clamped, pre-drilled and glued and screwed. And this one is also important to keep the corners clear so the hardware for latching in place has enough room to hold it. And now I'm just screwing on the side parts of this. These aren't that important, but it, it gives it much more structure and it hides the inside. Um, like the other ones, I just glued and screwed these. Now I'm gluing on the top. I made sure to use a lot of glue, but because I didn't want it to fall off. So I put a lot of glue on every plywood joint and um, making sure to spread it out and to not really, I tried to avoid getting it in the pipe to glue, gum it up or anything. And I just screwed, glued, drilled and screwed the top also. Now I just place the top on and I use some clamps to hold it in place to make sure that it really sandwiched everything together. This was very important because it would have been very difficult to make sure that it was on there right. And, and then I just went at it with the screws, making sure to get as many screws as possible. I hit every joint or every strip underneath, making sure to not hit the pipe. And um, yeah. And now I'm making the handles, which you'll see later. I just hot glued four squares of plywood together and I'm drilling a hole through the center on the drill press. Now I'm cutting these squares into circles at the bandsaw. There's still one big stack of wood but once I cut them and sand them, I will uh, split them apart and use them for a handle. I also tap these holes, which 
isn't doesn't hold that well in wood, especially not the tap that I used, but it worked for this project. Now here is the base and the hardware on the corners is just a bolt and then an eye bolt through the middle and I cut slits on each side of the plywood. So you unscrew the knobs and you flip them outwards and this uh, allows you to turn the top over and then you just flip these back into the slots and tighten them and it has a pretty good hold um, and this is why you need to keep the corners clear so that the eye bolts have room to turn and the, you don't have to clear it out later. And now I'm just tightening these down. The plywood, these, these are the handles I made. They work all right, but I would have preferred some like plastic handles with threads in them because these threads kind of wore out quick. Now I'm just trimming off the pipe. I used a hacksaw for this. You could really use anything that can cut metal. It went pretty quick. Um, and I just, I left a little extra over so it didn't, the pipe didn't slip back in, but it doesn't matter really how long you cut it. And it just went, this hacksaw made quick work of this pipe. Now I'm putting these caps on the end of the pipe to prevent it from moving. And this is gonna be the shelve on the bottom. I used pocket holes for this. And so I drilled like five or so pocket holes on each side with my Craig pocket hole jig. These, these work pretty well because it allowed me to not have to measure from the sides in. And went relatively quickly and held pretty well. So now I'm just securing this in place. I used some strips. I used a strip supply that I was going to use as the drawer with a small shim on top to space it. I just slid it right into place. This worked well for spacing and it allowed me to not have to hold it in the air. And I was making sure it was fully flat on those. And then I just came back and drove in the screws and it sucked it in the sides to it. And this also gave the cabinet a lot more structure and rigidity. And now I'm just, I cut strips of plywood that I, these are strips of plywood I had scrap and now I'm just measuring out how long they are and cutting them down to size on the miter saw. These aren't from the sheet of plywood I used but there was enough scrap left over to make these. So this whole project still could consist of one sheet of plywood. And now I cut a slot in them at the table saw. This was going to be the bottom of the drawer. It was going to be quarter inch plywood. And so this slot allows for the plywood to sit in it. And I didn't have to use any fasteners to hold the plywood in place. And I just went really slow with this. I made sure I had my depth right. And it did take two passes to get a quarter inch slot because the blade didn't fit in. And now I'm cutting a handle on the front facing part of the drawer. It's just a simple handle and I cut it on the bandsaw. It's just a line with two 45 degree angles coming off. And uh, this allows for no drawer pulls, but still easily ac easy access to the drawer. Now I'm assembling the drawer. I start by putting the plywood in the rabbit that I cut earlier and it was a pretty tight fit so I had to give it a little negotiation with the mallet and uh, I just start by putting all the other sides on and making sure that it's seated in it using the mallet and then I just put glue on each face and um, then I come back with a brad nailer and give about two or three brad nails per side this helps to keep it in place and it doesn't require any time, which is nice. And now I'm just sliding the drawer in. As you can see, it's a 
pretty nice bed. Very easily slides in and out, and no sticky spots. So now I have both the scroll saw and belt sander on it, and this is just, again, how to flip it. I mounted these to the face with carriage bolts. I also drove in two extra screws for cord, cord management. This helped a lot with the cord. And um, with even though these tools weigh a lot, they were relatively easy to move. And as you can see here, it kind of balances itself and doesn't like automatically flip. Yeah, as you can see, it was very easy to move these heavy machines, and the there there was no trouble with the cabinet or the pipe supporting it. And then I just take these the knobs and fasten them to the side, and you're ready to go to work. So all in all, this project was very easy. It is very nice because it allows for you to have two tools in the footprint of one. And I did end up putting casters on the bottom, which I didn't show, but. It allowed for it to be moved around very easily. And uh, all in all, this project was definitely worth it. So if you guys liked the video, leave a like and subscribe.